do this. Let's talk about talk. Hey there, I'm Dr. Andrea Wojnicki. You can call me Andrea. Thanks for listening to Talk About Talk. This is where we come to learn and talk about all things communication. Because when we communicate effectively, we can be a better manager, coworker, parent, partner, and friend. Yes, a better human being. Speaking of better humans, once again, we have the privilege of learning from Tosca Reno, today's guest expert. Today, we're focusing on positive self-talk and the three E's of wellness. I want to say something here, even at the risk of sounding unprofessional. Just quickly, if I sound stuffed up in this interview that's coming up, like I couldn't breathe through my nose, well, that's because I was stuffed up. I was trying to wean myself off of my allergy meds. So I just want to apologize in advance. And yes, I'm better now. Thank you for asking. Okay, let's do this. This is the third and last episode in our three-episode series on self-talk. In episode number 25, we focused on building resilience. In that episode, also with Tosca Reno, Tosca shared her incredible experiences and advice with adversity and resilience. If you haven't heard that episode yet, I strongly encourage you to do so. In the most recent podcast episode, number 26, I summarized some helpful research for us on self-talk, including five specific mindsets that we should all seek and five things that we can do right now to improve our self-talk. In this episode, you'll hear from Tosca about positive self-talk and the three E's of wellness. I promise you that by the end of this podcast, you'll have learned several real tractable strategies that will help you with your self-talk and to help you focus on wellness, both physically and psychologically you'll also be incredibly inspired. Since many of you already met Tosca Reno in episode number 25, I'm just going to briefly introduce her here now. Tosca Reno is a New York Times bestselling author, the founder of the Eat Clean Diet Health Revolution, a health and wellness expert, a transformation coach, and a motivational speaker. Tosca has experienced adversity more than a few times, but she always comes out better than before. She's often called the woman with nine lives, Tosca has a depth of experience beyond many. Through her love of family, she reveals her selflessness. Through her loss of love and child, she reveals her humanity. Through her consistent caring for others, she shares her compassion. Through her grit, she shows her resilience. When most would have given up, Tosca still stands, sharing her smile and her authenticity. Tosca Reno is a role model in positive self-talk, and we're very fortunate to have her here now. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a great pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's start with your three E's. Can you tell us what they are and define (laughs) them for us, please? Okay. So the three E's of wellness really explains or captures what the World Health Organization reveals as true wellness. To be truly well, you need to pursue three avenues in your life closely, and that is what you eat. So I call that eating clean. That's the first E. It's how you move your body or exercise. That's your second E. And thirdly, it's about emotional self-care. And I learned that the hard way when in my uh, previous life, when my stepson died and my husband died and all of that loss, and I could eat clean and I could exercise, but I was not healthy. I was not well. So I had to do the emotional work. Do you want to get into the emotional self-care a little bit and tell us what you did? Because you, you said something to me in one of our communications about meditation, and I thought, oof. I think I need to follow some of her advice, so. (laughs) Yeah. So, yes, meditation is an aspect of emotional self-care. We can do a number of things to uh, strengthen how we love our head and heart space. And it was about four years into the grieving process after Robert and so many things had happened, and I wasn't doing well. Um, my, My daughter, Rachel, and she basically came here to this house, and I was literally catatonic. I was in bed in the afternoon. I'm never in bed in the afternoon. I couldn't put sentences together. I didn't know what I was saying or thinking. I was just, I was so consumed by grief, I didn't know what to do. Mm. And, and that's when Rachel just basically said, Mom, you, you got to start doing something to take care of your, your heart, your head. Something's wrong. We're going to start with meditation. And the first meditation I ever did was with um, Andy the Monk on the Headspace app. You know, free month trial. Yep. There you go. And you listen to this monk with the beautiful Scottish voice. I've heard it's a great place to start. It's fantastic. And the reason why it's fantastic is because he teaches you how to be quiet, but not quiet. In other words... When a thought pops up, he teaches you what to do about that. See, I was terrified of meditation before because I'm a doer. 
Everything about me is busy, 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 go, 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 do, do, do. I couldn't slow down long enough to feel anything. So really the coaching of that voice and that very basic beginning meditation helped me learn how to meditate. Now I do it. I mean, this morning I got up, I started, well, I didn't even get up. I just hit the play button on my meditation. I'm still in bed and I start my day with meditation and I can do 20 minutes unguided. But you can do 20 minutes of unguided meditation. Uh-huh. I have a mantra tattooed on my wrist and it comes from the meditation I like best. It's by Wayne Dyer. It's called the Moses Code Meditation. And basically it's a mantra of self. I am strong. I am. I am beautiful. I am. I am worthy. I am. And it, just to this music, but you're, this is what you're repeating and you choose your I am. But when we say that we are, we are in the moment of God. We are in our godliness because God created us and made us who we are. It's beautiful. So a couple things. First of all, I got to make sure I get a picture of your wrist so that I can show people <laughs> what you were just pointing at, which is a beautiful tattoo that says I am on her right, uh, right dominant hand. Wrist. Yeah. And it's a question that I wanted to ask you later on, but I'll ask it now. Is that your mantra? Do you have a mantra? And if you do, is it I am? It is I am. And it speaks to also the tribe of women that I have grown and developed with over the last few years. Because at the same time that I learned how to meditate, I also began to participate in a group of people who meditated. And so a group of us have this I am tattooed on our wrists. And we we met on Saturday night, for example, had a big bonfire and a, you know, yes, it's a ladies night, but it's also a healing night for us. Um, So do you feel like the I am is also we are? Like, is there some power in that connection? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, the circle, the sisterhood, the tribe, the the struggle, life, you know, life is real. It's not always a piece of cake. So it, in that, there is a great deal of power. So meditation was where I began with my healing uh, of emotional self, which was really quite broken. And I wouldn't say that I'm completely fixed. <laughs> I still have experiences where I'm trying to break through the crustiness of myself. I grew up in Wait a, a second, the crustiness of yourself. I grew There's up, nothing about you that's crusty. Well, <laughs> that's, that's sweet. I, I grew up in a very strict Roman Catholic household. My parents were Dutch immigrants. And oh, this, uh, it, was a, it was a difficult, difficult childhood. My, my mother was physical, very violent with us. Um, and I think because I was the biggest of the siblings, even though I wasn't the oldest... Um, I got more <laughs> somehow. So it's, um, I didn't, I didn't know how to actually be loved. I didn't know how to be warm and open. And or that's vulnerable, why I, right? Yeah. And that's because to be vulnerable was dangerous, right? Wow. So I had to break through that crustiness and it took a long, long time and a lot of work and a lot of groveling and a lot of fugly cries and snotty noses and falling and, blackness. Yeah. So you, when you're meditating, do you think about that stuff? I do. And, and I do energy work. So I, I, I work with women who can move your energy. I've done shamanic journeying so that I can tap into my power better. But the meditation helps. What also really helps is journaling. So I think, uh. so, so my morning routine basically is wake up, hydrate. I don't consume anything other than water. I don't turn on my phone other than to play the meditation meditate, absorb whatever it is in the meditation, whether I get a message, a smell, a lesson, uh, somebody shows up, a word, whatever. Then I journal immediately. And that's 10, 15 minutes, but I love to write. And then from there, I feed my brain by reading something like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill or The 21 Day Miracle by Ed Rush or something that feeds my soul so that I know that I've fed my brain. Hmm. And that's the beginning of my day. That sounds like a fantastic ritual. It's good. I need I need to do it <laughs> to ritualize because, um, well, first of all, humans are hardwired in our brains for ritualization. Yep. We like that, which is why PMS to me means please more structure. And I love it. <laughs> I like that yeah. too. I, I need it. I need the, the, the lines. <laughs> I am with you on the structure. Ask yeah. anyone in my family. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so I, I'm looking for, I guess, tactics and strategies okay. that will 
enable the, myself and the listeners in positive self-talk. So waking up and hydrating, and then there's the meditation, journaling, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Reading and nourishing your brain. Yep. So think about all of these things. What we're talking about from the gentle waking up, from pushing your phone away other than to listen to meditative music, listening for the messages, connecting with yourself, writing, practicing gratitude, hydrating, all of these things are acts of self-love. Your brain is most creative and most absorptive that first hour after you wake. So when your first messages to yourself are loving yourself, finding the quiet, speaking the gratitude, journaling to cement the thoughts in your brain because neurons that fire together wire together. This is all like a a self-fulfilling cycle of love, right? Oh, she's loving me. That's good. Well, then I'm going to feel better about the next thing she does. I'm going to love myself some more. I'm going to do the writing. I'm going to do the thankfulness. Then I'm going to do something else to love myself. And then you're going to get out of that bed. You haven't even left the bed yet. And you're like, I really feel good. I need to eat something. Now you're not going to go eat a Twinkie because that's going to take all that positive vibrational energy Uh. and squash it. And then you're going to want to do that workout because your body is on fire and so on, right? Each of these things gathers momentum. That's why it takes time to develop the habits of wellness. But when you live a lifestyle of wellness, it feels less like a diet, less like punishment, less like starvation or restriction. It feels like life. So you use the word momentum, which is what I was thinking when you were talking about the cycle, right? You start off your day with positive momentum. I was thinking that the three E's and maybe particularly emotional self-care, they're obvious, but they're not obvious. And they're certainly not easy. Otherwise, we'd all be doing it. And we wouldn't even be having this conversation. And do you know why? Why? That's my question. Why? Because eating and exercise are just execution. That's easy. You tell me how to eat or exercise, I can do that. Feeling something, whole nother ball game. There's no go from A to B to C, get result. You have to feel it. That's why I say the emotional self-care for me was some of the hardest sets and reps I've ever done in my life. Tougher than changing your diet, tougher than oh, exor- yeah. diet exercising Diet was easy more. for me. Exercise, easy, easy. Falling down in the grass, sobbing your guts out. No, that's not easy. So when you don't have the momentum, when you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to be done my shower in the next 30 minutes because I have a meeting, but you're sleep deprived. And the last thing you want to do is hydrate, meditate, yeah. journal, and read. What Choose do you do? one and be okay with it. Because what we normally do is we start that whole cycle of you're dumb, you're stupid, you failed. I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to wreck it. I've already wrecked it. I failed. Right? This Are you is what reading we do. my mind? This is what we do. So this is exactly what happened to me this morning. I had my gym clothes on. I was ready to go and just sweat it out in the gym. I had done my rest of my morning routine already. I get a call from my realtor and my accountant. We're going to be in the house in 10 minutes. Well, I can't get a workout in 10 minutes. I quickly change my clothes. I have to do this meeting. I was okay with that. I know my lifestyle is solid. And if I miss a day, it's not going to wreck me. In the beginning, it feels like it's going to wreck you. You're just learning how to do it. But ultimately, you get to a place where it's just second nature. And I know that I can do my workout after we're done here. And I know that I can do it twice as hard tomorrow if I want to. That negative self-talk for me getting rid of it was a big job because I was the best at negative self-talk. I started my fitness career at the age of 42. I was looking at the oxygen cover models with the ripped abs and the butt, and they knew what triceps were, and I didn't. I was so insecure. I had the negative self-talk going all the time until I finally had the realization, you know what? People are looking up at you for what you've accomplished in a time where no one expects it. And you are a better person for all you've done, all you've achieved, and all your rawness. Just be raw and forget about what everybody else is thinking. And you stay focused on, I did my best. One thing that I was actually thinking on my way here Mm -hmm. that I've noticed about you in the few times that we've met now is balance. And I think you just articulated that without using that word, right? Because you said (laughs) if if something happens and I need to do a 180, I can do that. Do you know what I have? I have what I call wellness hygiene or wellness literacy, meaning... I can, in my mind, the equation is eating clean, exercise, emotional self-care. Okay, something comes up. Well, I have enough emotional self-care to know that it isn't going to wreck my day because I've already got the other two pieces in place. Or if they're not in place, 
tomorrow's another day. I can practice forgiveness. I go on. Most of us throw our hands up in the air and say, it's over. I'm done. I'm a failure. You know, go down that whole road. I just say, well, today's not the day. Tomorrow's another day. Right. Tomorrow's another day. Wellness literacy, wellness hygiene. No point making yourself crazy over what you didn't get done. I love that. Wellness literacy and wellness hygiene. Hygiene. It's like tomorrow you're always starting at zero. Actually, you're no, starting at you're plus not. something, right? Yeah. Now, I never say you're starting at zero unless you're in your very early days because no amount of calorie counting, fad diets, trendy anything can trump lifestyle. Lifestyle trumps all. When we're living a healthy lifestyle on a daily basis, long term, it's the only thing that can actually override your genetic expression. When we have a healthy lifestyle, we can do that. So if you know that lifestyle is your ace in the hole, you know that going down the path of negative self-talk because you didn't accomplish something in a day is counter to your wellness. Tomorrow's another day. Saddle up, honey. Let's go. That's very empowering. I wish you people could see the way she's looking at me. I'm so empowered. (laughs) (laughs) So your comments about lifestyle reminded me about blue zones. Yes. And a few months ago in one of my weekly blogs, I was talking about blue zones because I find them absolutely fascinating. And for those people who don't know, blue zones are places in the world where people tend to live longer. So there's a lot of research about what factors distinguish these people and particularly the lifestyle factors Mm -hmm. that are associated with them. I was thinking that eating clean, exercise and emotional care seem to rate high in these areas. And I know that you've been to one of those blue zones, which is Nicoya in Costa Rica. Yes. I'd love to learn more about what you observed there. Generally, when I go down to Costa Rica, it's for my retreats. And the culminating experience of the retreat is that we go to Nicoya Peninsula in the Blue Zone for a day. What that means is for the retreat guests and myself is they have experienced several days of learning how to eat clean, cook, exercise, meditate, journal, get spiritual with self. And now they're going to go to this place where they see this expressed in the people. And you have a traditional meal prepared by Costa Rican peoples and you sit in their restaurant with their table. It's very humble. And you eat this meal made with love and you see the traditional food that's grown in the backyard over there. And you see men that are 93, 107 years old. Wow. They're mobile. They have their teeth, full heads of hair. They they comp- they understand everything and they flirt. They have the what's called brillo in Spanish, right? Which is the sparkle in the eye. You must have a photo of a 107-year-old man flirting with you. There are a few. <laughs> and so then this time we got to go to the community center and we, we brought food that was prepared at the restaurant and we fed the elders at the community center. And then we had a special surprise, a treat, because a gentleman who was not, he was blind, uh, played the guitar for us and then we all danced. And it was like brio and magic and joy. And what we're seeing is health, the purest expression of health health or wellness in these people through their joy, laughter, through what they eat, through how they treat the elderly in the community, through how they treat those citizens who have less ability, perhaps the person who can't see. You see what health looks like. You don't see people in carts. You don't see people on motor scooters that can't get around. You don't see obesity. You don't see rotting teeth or psychotic episodes. You don't see people running around with guns shooting people. You see the joy of life lived out in these people. And you see the value of how a lifestyle creates this, the abundance of living. So if someone was to go into Nokoya and say, what is your secret sauce? What are, what's the secret here? Okay. What do they think it is? Well, they think it's having coffee with their with their friends and loved ones. It's very important to be part of the community. So this is a thing. The elders are not sequestered. They're welcomed in. Everybody sits at the table together. Uh, so that's one thing. So it's connection and there's no ageism. Correct. In fact, is age revered? Is it the opposite or they is it just... Are, I'm telling you the way that the older people are treated is touching. There was not a dry eye in the house. Not a dry eye. You just see something that you know is right and beautiful. It touches you. It, the other things that they have are they, they're very proud to show you that the corn that we're eating and the tortilla that they made came from the garden that was grown over there. Right that there. the hundred year old tilled the soil in. Because these are not GMO seeds. They are, these are heirloom seeds. The chicken that they raise is grass fed. There's no antibiotic. The water. Water is key. Water is the number one nutritional deficiency in the world. 
number one. But their water flows through a limestone bed. So it's pulling out the minerals. And these minerals go into the bones, the teeth, the hair, the eyes, the brain, the nerves, and creates a healthier, stronger human being. Wow. We're not doing that. We're drinking water that has no electrolytes, no minerals in it. So no wonder we have osteoporosis and dental disease and nerve damage and, and brain malfunction. So you are bearing witness to the wellness that should be yours. And you go and you see it and you just think, I would love to go. Bucket list. Let's go. Okay. Let's go to the... <laughs> okay. I have a list of questions. Here. Just mm. uh, It's a list of Tosca's advice. So I want to hear things you do to stay on track. And you've already shared some of those. Things you say to yourself, maybe other than your mantra. And then also, what do you say to yourself when you have setbacks? You got this. So that's what the other tattoo is. Infinite power. These are Aramaic symbols that tell me every day, infinite power. You have the ability. You have the power. You will not crumble. That's what you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. When I am isn't enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to have to get a photo of that tattoo as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about the three E's. I love that it's a list. Yeah. I love that it's structured. I love yeah. that it's simple. I even love the alliteration. But I feel like if I'm about to embark on the three E's of wellness, I want to know where to start. Mm -hmm. How do I decide what to do first? I thought about that and created a 12-week program so I can walk people through exactly that. And I packaged it in such a way that it feels like you're getting beautiful mouthfuls of just the right information at the right time. So that will be launched in September. But for anybody listening to this now who's questioning where they fit in that list of three E's, am I taking care of my, my eating clean? Am I exercising? Am I taking care of my emotional self? And you want to know where to begin. You've heard me say a couple of things already, starting with perhaps hydration, starting with meditation, starting with journaling, practicing gratitude. In my family, we have a game. It's called the gratitude game. So if one of my girls calls me and they're whining on the other of the phone because they didn't have a great day at work, I will say, okay, hold up, stop the phone right there. Let's list off 10 things, each taking a turn of what we're grateful for. So Kirsten will say, I'm grateful for my curly hair. And I'll say, I love my feet. And we go back and forth. And you've just gratituded yourself out of your funk. And that's an easy one. Anybody can do I that. I love that. I yeah. love that. So- for you, you knew that the emotional self-care was the thing that you were not achieving to the standard that you needed to, right? Well, I, I didn't know what I didn't know until I knew that I knew it. <laughs> yeah, until basically, yeah, I fell on my face, yeah. So my question is, do you think that we should focus first on the thing that we are most deficient in? Or vice versa, first no. on the thing that... No, I think there has to be a readiness. I do not think that the exercise of emotional self-care is going to be easy for everyone. So I'm not saying start with the easiest. I say start with the thing you can commit to. Uh, for me, it wasn't emotional self-care because I didn't know what the heck that was. I didn't know. <laughs> that was not a thing we were raised with in my household, right? The people that I chose and the men that I loved didn't teach me that. I had to learn that. And that was the gift of Bob's passing and Braden's passing and the business passing was learning that. And I was a willing student because I was so broken. My goal every day, my desire in life is to be with my children so I can see them raise their families. And so I had to fix it. I had to do something about it. And would you say your first step was meditation? Yeah, 100%. And you already had the exercise yeah. and the eating clean. Yeah, I, was, I already had that figured out because my past showed me that. I competed. I had competed at the age of 52, just after Bob passed. So I, I could figure that part out. I had that down, not so much the head heart space. Huh. I love the fact that it's three things because I, I've heard this before. It's like a tripod yeah. or a stool. If any of them is absent, it falls over. Exactly. Right? I fell over. I definitely fell over. I, I think you're right on there. So I have another question. Mm. And that is, do you think it makes a difference whether when we're trying to convince ourselves or inspire ourselves to change behaviors for the better, whether we make a public or a private declaration? I do. And I think you have to make a declaration to self. You don't have to go public. I do think that you need to declare it for yourself. Yes. And so in my three E's of wellness, there is a piece where I ask people to do the work of writing out their definite purpose statement, which is borrowed from Napoleon Hill. But it is so powerful. It, it's really a document that encodes your manifesto to yourself and what you wish to accomplish and how you're going to accomplish it in your wellness. 
Okay. So it's not necessarily the public-private, but it is the formality of it. So I, I made a statement earlier where neurons that fire together wire together. If you think it, write it, speak it, you're wiring those neurons together so that this is now a thing. You formalize it on paper. Okay. Here's a question that might sound like it's coming out of left field, but um, oh. <laughs> you are such an inspirational role model for many of us, including your followers on Facebook and so on. Do you have a role model? (laughs) Wow. First of all, thank you. I'm very blessed. I have a beautiful audience and I count myself lucky every day. I work very hard to cultivate strong relationships on my website, in my platforms, and anywhere I go because I'm very grateful. I look up to people who are making success out of a mess. So I've been lately following Mel Robbins with the 54321 Yourself and Brene Brown. And I also love people like my mother who was who, who was really raised as a child witnessing the atrocities of the Nazis. She made a life for herself with nothing out of nothing and the courage to do that when it felt like the whole world was falling apart. I think about the little heroes every day I look for my heroes in the everyday person. It's not all glamorous Instagram life. It's not, right? It's being real. When the camera's off. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that's beautiful. So what do you think about Jane Fonda? I have to ask. And I love her. I read you know? that. I, <laughs> what I, is I, it about her? She seems evergreen. And I love that she's been able to keep herself relevant with her decades. First of all, she's blessed to be in her 80s now and she's worked hard for it, but it's still a blessing because no one has a guarantee on lifespan. I look up to the fact that she's been willing to do it. And every time she throws something new at you, like I remember at the Oscars when she wore that man's shirt with the pink ball gown skirt and I'm thinking, that's amazing. She looks fantastic. And now she's what, 82 and she films 10 hour days for her show, which is a massive hit. Yeah, so I just think, you know what? She can do it. I can do it. You definitely can. (laughs) You definitely can. So after hearing this, I can imagine that many of the listeners are really going to be interested in signing up for the three E's. Can you tell us how to make it happen? Yeah, sure. So you can just go to toscareno.com. And right now there's a wait list because we actually go live with the, the launch in September. And we will take good care of you because we, we also engage with people who are interested. So when I think of you and your story, Tosca, I think of many things. Mm. Resilience, which we've talked about in depth. Also optimism, energy, discipline, and I still think balance because you eat clean, but you'll allow yourself to have a glass of wine, for goodness sake, Mm -hmm. amongst other things, right? Right. Here's a tough question. Mm -hmm. Is there one skill or trait that you think has helped you most? Probably my stubbornness, which can be bad and good, but in my case... That stubbornness has led to survival, has led to thriving, has led to success, has led to taking risks. Yeah. You know, stubbornness can be an awful thing, (laughs) but I'm Dutch. I was born with it. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. I didn't know what you were going to say. Stubbornness. Yeah. I think if we're honest, all of those traits that really propel us, there's a good side and a bad side to them. Yeah, yeah. Really, I think when you're stubborn, it means you're ready to fight the fight. You're not afraid to back down. You bring in your courage, you bring in what you got, you bring in your 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 lady balls, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it, whatever it takes. I'm gonna do it. Once I have left this chapter of my life, I'm in the victory pose. I'm going all the way. Look out, world. <laughs> okay. Is there any other general advice that you have for listeners in terms of positive self-talk? I do have one piece of advice, and this is it. The minute you start thinking, I can't do it, think I can. And I'm going to tell you why this works. Usually when I work with clients in the gym, I will get them going, doing something. I'll say, now I want you to do the 20. Let's say 20 pound curls. I can't do it. And they can't. Now I tell them, okay, now we're going to do 20 pound curls and you can do it. And the minute you say you can, you automatically can. And I get them to do it. And then I'll say, and give me five more reps. When you're tired, five more. No, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And the five reps come out. So... Your strength in being able to perform at life, whether it's exercise, eating clean, emotional self-care, or anything you do, lies in your words. And be careful with your words because your brain is always listening. If you just told your brain, I can't, well, then you can't. But if you told your brain, I can, then you can.
Beautifully put. I am definitely going to quote you on that. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time and your expertise, Tosca. Oh, thank you. This has been, um, for me, richly rewarding. The time has just flown by. It has. I really, really. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Let me just start by saying how grateful I am for that conversation. I've started doing some of the things that Tosca recommends, especially the morning rituals, and they do feel so good. I told Tosca that when I think about her, I think of many things. Resilience, but also optimism, energy, discipline, and balance. She really is an inspiration, both in how she helped herself and how she's now helping others. So I want to say thank you so much, Tosca, for sharing your expertise over these two episodes and for helping us with our own self-talk. I hope you listeners will take a moment to check out what else Tosca has to say on her website, toscareno.com. Oh, before I forget, I did take pictures of Tosca's two tattoos. Those photos are in the show notes, along with the summary of this episode, the transcript, and the references. Now, let me quickly summarize some of the key learnings from this episode. Here's a list of six strategies for positive self-talk that Tosca shared. First and foremost, there's the three E's, of course. Tosca advocates for wellness hygiene or wellness literacy. In other words, a lifestyle focused on eating clean, exercise, and emotional well-being. She calls it her ace in the hole. I don't know how anyone could argue with this formula. And it's an excellent framework for us to track in our own lives. Got it? Eat clean, exercise, and emotional well-being. Second, practice gratitude. That's how you move up the emotional ladder from shame to joy. Be grateful. Thank you again, Tosca. Third, Tosca encourages us to cherish the rituals in our lives. A good place to start is with our morning routines. Tosca said that her morning routine is to wake up, hydrate with water, not turn on her phone other than to play meditation, meditate, then write in her journal, then read something that feeds her soul. And if she doesn't have time for all this, she chooses just one. And she's grateful for that. Another of Tosca's strategies for positive self-talk is from this list of morning rituals. Meditation. You can start with a free app and go from there. Tosca's evolved from free apps to energy work and shamantic journeying. Tosca's next strategy for positive self-talk is journaling. Write down something that you're grateful for. Something positive. And the last strategy for positive self-talk. Connecting with others. Tosca talked about how much she values her tribe of women. She also pointed out that this is something that people cherish in the Blue Zones, like in Nicoya, Costa Rica, where she has her retreat. So there are your six strategies for positive self-talk. There's the three E's, practicing gratitude, cherishing rituals, meditating, journaling, and connecting with others. I challenge you, I challenge all of us to choose just one of those things and try to adopt it to improve your own self-talk. As you're internalizing all this, don't forget, it's not easy. Tosca reminds us that eating and exercise are really just execution, and that's easy. You just have to eat or exercise. You can do that, right? But feeling something, that's a whole other ballgame. But we can do it, right? Say the words, we can. All right, that's it for this three-episode series on self-talk. I would love to hear what you thought of it. What was your favorite part? Should I do it again? Any suggested topics? I have been thinking about one topic, and that is money. I have a published research paper on how financial compensation affects people's likelihood of generating word of mouth. That could be a small part of it. But more generally, I'm thinking about topics like how to talk to your financial advisor to get the advice you really need, how to teach your kids about financial literacy, and how to talk to your family about finances and wills. What do you think? Please let me know. You can email me anytime at andrea at talkabouttalk.com or connect with me on social media. Talk About Talk is on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Now, I want to leave you with Tosca's parting words for us. Here's what she said. I do have one piece of advice, and this is it. The minute you start thinking, I can't, think, I can. So your strength in being able to perform at life, whether it's exercise, eating clean, emotional self-care, or anything you do, lies in your words. And be careful with your words because your brain is always listening. If you just told your brain that it can't, well, then you can't. But if you told your brain, I can, then you can. 
Always remember, tomorrow's another day. So saddle up, honey. Let's go. We'll be right back.